Madam President, first of all, I'm so pleased to be able to work with my good friend, uh, Chairman Mikowski. And it's something that she's worked on for quite some time with Senator Cantwell, me taking up this new position. I want to make sure that I help them the best I can to bring this to fruition. That's what we're working on right now. And, and, and to have Senate Bill 47 uh, in front of us is, is pretty special. The public lands package includes such a wide variety of bills, as the chairman has spoken about. There's currently more than 130 different pieces of individual legislation that will address many members priorities for public lands and the natural resources in their respective states. Uh, the public lands package doesn't come together that often. I think it's been five years, as we've said, and it's uh, far and few in between. But when it does, we try to accommodate and do the right thing that really helps our country and future generations. Many of the bills uh, in this package provide technical corrections and improvements to existing policies, but do not have a significant impact outside their local sphere. However, these minor bills will improve the way our public lands are managed and conserved uh, at the ground level. While these bills are important to the residents of the small towns uh, like mine across America and the members of this body who represent them, rarely will these individual bills receive the floor time that they truly deserve. Because of this, it is necessary for us to move these bills together in this package, which is what we have before us, uh, coming up before us uh, probably by tomorrow, I think. Um, this package was literally years in the making, as I've said, builds on the package that was negotiated last December by Chairman Mikowski, then Ranking Member Cantwell, then Chairman Bishop, then Ranking Member uh, Grijalva of the House Natural Resources Committee. Together, this group came together and negotiated a large package. Unfortunately, the Senate could not pass the package last December, which is why we find ourselves here today. I'm grateful for the opportunity to serve as the ranking member of the committee and to be working with my friend from Alaska, Chairman Murkowski, on this package, but also on many other issues we will consider in the committee in coming time. I would also like to take this moment to thank the committee staff, the majority and minority, as well as the floor staff for the diligence in working on this package. Uh, I would like to include a list of names who worked on the package for both me and Senator Cantwell and in our committee over the last few months, and I would also like to include the names of the floor and leadership staff. Uh, Madam President, I ask unanimous consent. The list of names appear in the record. Without objection. Madam President, this package enjoys the support from numerous national and state organizations across the political spectrum. For example, the National Wildlife Federation and the Congressional Sportsman Foundation are two of its strongest and most dedicated advocates, and I thank him for their support. Madam President, I also ask unanimous consent to submit these letters from organizations writing against support of this bill and ask that they appear in the record. Without objection. This package should be warmly received by both Democrats and Republicans. It's truly a bipartisan effort. For starters, the package includes numerous land exchanges and conveyances, designates over 1.3 million acres of wilderness, designates 367 miles of wild and scenic rivers, and provides boundary adjustments, designation changes and management improvements to numerous areas in our four corners of the country. All of this will improve access, provide recreational opportunities, and allow for our federal public land management agencies, the Bureau of Land Management, the Forest Service, the Fish and Wildlife Service, and the National Park Service to better serve the public through varying missions as directed by Congress. Madam President, our public lands are truly one of the nation's greatest treasures that we have, and we are unique in how we set aside some of our most special places in the country to be conserved, protected, and easily accessible to the public so that we can all enjoy the beauty that these areas offers. Usually these lands are located in rural areas with few other economic opportunities, making these treasures economic engines for the surrounding communities. In fact, data from the U.S. Department of Commerce Bureau of Economic Analysis shows the outdoor recreation economy accounted for 2.2% of GDP and grew faster than the overall economy. According to the Outdoor Industry Association, outdoor recreation supports 7.6 million direct national jobs and $887 billion in consumer spending. Overall, this contributes billions to the federal, state, and local governments in tax revenue. In West Virginia, outdoor recreation supports 91,000 direct jobs and $9 billion in consumer spending. And each year, 67% of West Virginia residents take to the outdoors to escape the hustle and bustle 
of their daily lives to enjoy the peace and serenity of our wild and wonderful outdoor heritage. It is truly almost heaven. If you haven't been there, we welcome you. Um, this package provides permanent reauthorization of the Land and Water Conservation Fund, which Senator Murkowski has pointed out. This is something each one of us, 535 members of Congress, are truly, truly supportive of because it affects our states and our districts. LWCF is a simple yet highly effective conservation tools with unrivaled success over the last 50 years. Every year, $900 million in royalties paid by energy companies drilling for oil and gas on the outer continental shelf are put into this fund. Unfortunately, LWCF expired last September. The Natural Resource Management Act provides permanent authorization. I repeat, permanent authorization of the LWCF. That's enough to bring all of us together. This permanent reauthorization ensures states and federal public land management agencies have the ability to continue to protect and conserve our natural resources for the next generation. And it does so without relying on taxpayer dollars. Since 1965, more than $243 million in LWCF funds have been spent in my little state of West Virginia on more than 500 projects, both on state and federal lands. This includes improvements to the local parks and public spaces in 54 of our little state's 55 counties. It also funded acquisition for our most cherished public lands, such as the Gauley River National Recreation Area, the New River Gorge National River, and Dolly Sods in the Monongahela National Forest. This package also includes some long-awaited priorities for our sportsmen's groups. Each year, more than 350,000 hunters take to the woods in West Virginia to pursue game. These hunting traditions directly benefit rural communities by generating annual revenue and supporting 5,000 jobs. According to the West Virginia Division of Natural Resource, hunting-related expenditures total nearly $270 million into the state's economy. Aside from this, and perhaps most importantly, hunting in West Virginia is one of our oldest pastimes, where friends and families can gather and spend quality time together. As I work with other members of this, uh, of this very body on difficult issues, uh, where we may strongly disagree with each other, we are able to set aside differences when it comes to sportsmen's traditions. The, conservation, uh, the conversations quickly turn to stories of hunting a deer, taking our child to the first deer camp, or our children and grandchildren. It's important that we provide opportunities to keep these traditions alive. The Natural Resource Management Act will expand and enhance sportsmen's access by making federal lands throughout West Virginia and the nation open and less closed for fishing, hunting, recreational shooting, and other outdoor activities. As a hunter myself and as vice chair of the Congressional Sportsman Caucus, I know how frustrated sportsman groups have been trying to get their, pills, their bills passed the last few years. And that's one of the reasons why I'm pleased that Chairman Murkowski's bill, of which I am an original co-sponsor, the Sportsman Act, is included in this package. The Natural Resource Management Act also establishes several national heritage areas, including one in West Virginia, the Appalachian Forest Natural Heritage Area. National heritage areas are designated by Congress as places where natural, cultural, and historic resources combine to form a cohesive, nationally important landscape. The Appalachian Forest National Heritage Area has been operating as an ad hoc national heritage area for more than a decade. Despite not having the official designation, the Appalachian Forest Heritage Area has continually done a great deal for West Virginia. For example, the Appalachian Forest Heritage Area administers a credible AmeriCorps program. In one recent program year, 38 AmeriCorps members completed more than 65,000 service hours directly benefiting local rural areas in West Virginia, as in every state. These 38 members improved 1,700 acres of public land and managed more than 1,000 total volunteers. By providing the official NAH designation, the Appalachian Forest Heritage Area can earn the national recognition it deserves and is now also eligible for grants and technical assistance from the National Park Service. This will take their programmatic efforts and other services they provide to the region to the next level. I believe that this package is a great bill for both 
my Republican and Democratic friends. Numerous pieces of legislation that have been longstanding, priorities for many members are included. I would like to thank Chairman Murkowski again, as well as other members of the Energy and Natural Resources Committee for their efforts to reach an agreement on this bill. For those of our colleagues who felt that they were not able to get exactly what they wanted or exactly what they would love to have had in this bill, we are committed to working with them to further help them in getting access to any other pieces of legislation that we'll have working through the committee. And I want to thank the majority leader for his willingness to bring this bill to the floor. I believe it's time to send the bill to the House and to the President for his signature. We've had great working relationships with new Chairman Grijalva, and he is uh, committed to working with us as we move through this process. There are many good pieces of legislation in this package that will be valued for years to come by communities across the country and each one of our states. I strongly encourage members to vote yes on this final package. Uh, thank you, Madam President. 